Hi, and good evening. Welcome to Parks and Rec's uh, extra meeting, April 2nd, um, 7 p.m. Friday night. We um, are going to start with, uh, we'll talk, we'll do introductions. We have Pam Moore, member, Dave Lundin, member, vice chair, uh, John Van Exficiato, and I said that wrong, and Lisa <laughs> Exficio is director. And Ex officio. Ex officio. Janine Lynch, chairman. So um, tonight we wanted to meet out of our regular schedule so we could talk about a couple of important things that came up. Uh, Benji Knapp might be meeting us shortly, so we'll switch over to the boat ramp if he does. So we'll talk about Harrington Field first. I am going to try screen sharing here for a second. Oh, host has to enable screen sharing. I was just going to say you have to ask. Can I, how do I, okay, so do I, is that how I ask? I hit yeah, the ahead. button. Okay, let's see. All right. So, um, Mike Provincher, who is <laughs> vice president of WAC, went down and sent some picture, took some pictures of Purrington Field. So, can everybody see this? This is the washout. So, the dugout's behind these boards. The boards are supposed to retain the dirt. And um, as you can see, the boards aren't retaining the dirt. The water's just washing out right under it. It's, this happens often. It's not an uncommon thing, but this is worse than normal. And they're supposed to be on the field in a week. Um, and it's really not safe playable at all. This is another um, view of in front of the dugouts. You can see it's just all really, I mean, you can't run around this or, or play around it or anything like that. And then this is one of the bases and all of the bases are, this is the platform for the base to accept the base. And they're all, they're all like this where you can see right underneath the concrete. So even if they went and put the base on top, it's still way, um, way, too low, way too much material missing. So um, Joe Bell, who's the baseball director, sent an email over um, today and he said that he spoke with Foster Materials and Henniker this morning and that they can supply the infield mix and are one of the very few places that carry it. One triaxle load holds 23 tons and is roughly $33 delivered to the field. So they quoted, I'm assuming that's per ton, they quoted uh, $760. However, in the discussion to fully cover the field from the backstop to the outfield with the mix at a depth of three inches, we'd need 84 tons. Joe said he doesn't think that they need that much. Foster Materials suggested one load spread to see where we were at. We could also reach out to town and see if we have anyone who has a dump truck that would be willing to volunteer, make one or more runs with the material that would save us roughly $132.25 if we didn't have to pay for the delivery. Um, he asked about a price break, break or a, pretty, a pity discount, and the company said they can't do that since they're, they're really, they supply a good portion of New England and they have trouble keeping it in stock. Um, then he just talks about how in WAC they're trying to move money around and see how much they can do. They said they know money's tight all around, but if we can get the material here at the field, Maybe we can work with the town to spread the material. I'm not sure if that's something that the DPW could help us with and maybe compact it. I don't know what equipment they have. And, um, and he said he's all for going down there and trying to move it, but by hand, it would really take forever. And hiring someone seems like it might be out of the question financially. Um, he said he also has a couple more calls that he put out there. He's waiting for returns because most places are going to Henniker to buy the material from Foster. So he really thinks this is a, in short term, just get one load, get it spread, and come up with an actionable plan to make repairs as this fix will most likely only last till August. I mean, it's, it's temporary. So um, I don't know, questions, comments, concerns? Boy, don't all talk at once. So, um, you said this no, was I, in Henniker, no, right? No, the place that has the materials in Henniker. This is peering, peering. Right. But you're saying it's in Henniker. Is there a chance that we can maybe see if we can get 
Benji to take a to take one of the big one of the big town dump trucks over there and fill it and save the hundred and thirty two dollars or is that not something that can be done? Right, I don't. Right, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that at all. If the that would work, that's something we can definitely ask if he if he joins us. Um, but Lisa, what were you going to say? Can you hear me? All right. Yep, I can. Okay. Well, I could. So, um, so you asked about questions or questions or concerns. Yes. So, um, can you hear me still? Yep. Sorry. That's okay. So I guess I, I mean, I've already outlined, you know, to WAC and, um, you know, the communications that we've had with WAC that obviously we have a very, very tight um, budget. We only have $3,000 for maintenance um, for the whole year. And that's, that. we don't even know what we're getting into. We are anticipating some repairs with the irrigation system that didn't get taken care of last year. Um, and we have the boat ramp that we've got to deal with. And we have some other things that we've been hoping we are going to be able to get to. Um, so I've already let them know that I thought, you know, my, my personal opinion is that the best thing to do is for them to patch it at this point. If it's, it would be great. I would love it if the town could help in some way, um, just to patch it to get through this year. And then, um, you know, maybe we could think about a warrant article for next year, because obviously this is going to be building up a brick wall probably, or some sort of stone wall for retaining that field. Um, just because this continues to happen. So, you know, it's going to be a really big experience every year for taxpayers if we don't fix it right. Right. And there's no material we can salvage, right? It's because obviously it washed out. Where is it? I didn't, I was there the other day and I didn't go look to see where all the dirt disappeared to. So I think some of it's in the parking lot. And I'm also not sure that some of it won't kind of expand back to some degree um, once the ground is fully thawed and um, and get a little drier. I'm not sure. That's how it kind of looked to me. Right. I, I would recommend against a Warren article. Well, it, in theory, it's a great idea, but if <clears throat> down, then you can't do any repairs to it. Say that again, John. I didn't hear the very end. I heard you say you're against the idea of a warrant article, but what was the last sentence you said? Because if the town voters vote against it, um, no means no, meaning you cannot do any of those repairs. Um, that, as far as I know, that's going that would be the way it would be interpreted, and that could cause even more issues. Okay. So I was just thinking about a way to fund the repairs. So. If, oh, I, I agree. I, I see what you I, I understand that. The problem is, is with with warrant articles, if it gets disapproved or if it gets if it doesn't get approved by the voters, then you cannot spend any money to repair it. So if the voters say no, you can't take it out of your maintenance budget to go do it. That's that's the downfall and the and the scary part of that. All right, that's good to know. Lisa, you sound really crazy. Lisa, you sound really even enough to cut this. So, um, Lisa, you sound crazy. I don't know. Not a nice thing to say, Janine. Oh, there you go. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. I know what you mean. Hold on. I'm gonna switch to my I'm gonna switch devices. I apologize for saying that. Um, all right, so that's definitely one good suggestion is is seeing if if WAC can just do their their short term repair right now and maybe we can look into it. Maybe without a warrant article, maybe if we can, you know, save money. In the boat ramp angle or something to not have to go go all the way extreme to a CIP article that would help. Did we lose Dave? Dave? Nope, I'm here. Oh, okay. So um, did you have any, I only get to see half the names because I'm 
screen sharing. Um, did you have any more thoughts? If um, what do you think about if if WAC takes care of it for now and we look into seeing what we can do as far as I mean I like the idea of seeing if the DPW has equipment to at least help with once it gets there. I'm not sure about delivery with a dump truck we can ask, but. That's on my wish list of getting things is a dump is a personal dump truck, but it's not <laughs> I don't have it yet, so I can't offer to go get it. So Right. Do you like the idea though of seeing if WAC can kind of take care of it as far as a like a band-aid for now so they can get on the field and then see what we can work on later on for maybe more substantial assistance? I know that in one of the emails from Mike Preventure, the vice president of WAC, he indicated that their funding situation isn't what it used to be and that it would have to, they'd have to do some creative financing, looking at their budgets or their balances in order to do anything. Um, but this has been an ongoing thing and WAC has always been kind of reluctant to take on the project of the fields at Purington in particular, because there is going to be a huge expenditure dealing with that. So I don't know if, I mean, $760 for one load of material to at least get it ready to play this year might be in their best interest but they are gonna be looking to the town to put up some funds as well. We have to figure out a way to make that happen. Right, so you mean, you think you mean to help with the $760? Well, I don't know if we would be, able, I think we could probably split that with them. Mm -hmm. However, long-term repairs to the field, I mean, they've been talking about needing to get the backstop fixed, get the retaining walls fixed, get the stairs to the dugouts fixed. There's been a laundry list of things that they've needed to get fixed at Parrington that the cost is prohibitive for one organization to do it. And we haven't been able to find a way creatively for all involved to make it work. All right, I hear you. Naomi, what did you wanna say? Uh I have an Avery G in the waiting room. Oh, that's Lisa's that's Lisa's son. Yep. So that's her computer probably at home. Yep. That's Lisa. She okay. switched over her phone to her computer. Okay. Um I have a question because obviously if kind of whack is kind of spearheading it, is there some way that we could offer them? free advertisement that they could put up, we could put up a banner. I don't know what the banners cost, but if they were to give us a, a break and we were able to be able to let them put up a banner or a couple of them on the fields, because I know we have sponsors who put up banners, would they, is that an angle that we can look at to say, hey, look, we'll put up a sign for you. Because obviously I assume they have more than, uh, turf or dirt for baseball fields that they have probably loam and other things that they can do for homeowners that when everybody's sitting there they can oh so you mean you mean the material company the material company is okay can we give them an advertising spot on the field in trade for a right we mentioned something about that the last meeting and um naomi was cautioning you can't show favoritism it would have to be something to multiple companies. So right, we'd have to get a bid first. Right, we'd have to. So that's a possibility, maybe for a long-term thing, but we'd have to open it up for a lot of people. Like, you know, if you if you bid this project for us, we could include that or something, but it'd have to be, we'd have to right, get- But if it's, yes. if WAC is doing it and WAC is buying it, can, because obviously WAC is the ones that's putting up all the advertising signs. It's not anything to do with parks and rec. It would right, be right. All and that would be WAC. that would be up to WAC. I mean, I believe that they already hang banners of their sponsors at field games, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's so, all WAC stuff. Yeah. So they, I'm sure. I mean, that's a very good suggestion for WAC to be able to offer that to the to the material company. That's a good idea. Maybe Lisa or Pam can mention it at a meeting. 
<laughs> or to one of the are there, are there other companies that provide a mix besides Henniker? Well, yeah, I think brownies, I think brownies might have um, some product that would work. Um, still waiting. He's going to go down there and he, um, and look at it to see, because I called him about a quote. Um, the other person I was going to call on Henniker is too straight out busy right now. Um, so, and then that WAC had some people that were calling around. So there are other places. Is it a certain mix or what, what are you exactly looking for? It's funny because Foster Materials calls it infield mix, but I have no idea. I mean, I've looked a little online. It does seem to be, you know, some clay, some stone dust, you know, some sand kind of a combination, but I don't, it's, I don't it's, know. It's more, it's gone through a filtering process where they help take out some of the rocks because unfortunately the middle school, whatever infield mix they got had a ton of little rocks in it, which made <clears throat> the baseball field last year tough to play on. Because obviously, you know, in the when the spring ball spring ball was, was able to be played, it, it wasn't it was not the best dirt that was put out there. It's probably like twice washed. Because it is uh, obviously I know a lot about the dirt, but um, there's twice washed. There's a whole bunch of other things you can do with it. Right. Uh, Ryan was I thinking. Have a couple of questions. Yep. Question number one. So let's let's say we're unable to get anything. If WAC doesn't come forward and put put up some money for this, if we as a town decide not to do this, what happens at Pierrington Field? It gets shut down, and what are the effects of that? That's question number one. Question number two: um, We do get the mix. We do get it delivered. However, it's funded doesn't make a difference for this question. How are we going to spread it? I think that's what that's what Joe was saying. Um, Joe was saying, is there a possibility of some town help with spreading it? On question number two, question number one is that if we if that that field right now is definitely unusable, it's unsafe. Um, I I was there. I also took pictures the other day. Um, so the answer to that is that you probably have. And I'm not quite sure the numbers, but I'm guessing at least 60 to 80 kids that cannot play baseball because there's no other spot for them to go. I'm just, that, and that's a total guesstimate. I'm guessing on like six, six to eight teams that are using that because I know at, the, at those younger age levels. And we have to explain all of this in a one week period. Is that correct? No, it is not all on us. Um, so, um, yeah, no, it's not all on us. It's just that we, it's definitely something that I think we need to be thinking about. And I think at this point, um, you know, WAC is looking at, at buying some sort of uh, material for this year, but the thing is it's going to wash out. So whatever we put down there is going to wash out. It washes out every year. Um, what this year the for? damage is more extensive, extensive. What's our time frame on getting this repaired? When's when's the first scheduled? Next week. Correct. Okay, so we have we have five days to get this taken care of, basically. So I thought, Lisa, you said that they could possibly share some of the other fields a little bit, or is, some, is that at all an option? Um, there's the possibility of them asking the middle school for use of, this is only my, in my opinion, Okay. the possibility of them using, asking the middle school if they can use the softball field a little bit, but there's no mound there. And this age group kind of does use a mound. Um, and then there is a T-ball field, but I don't know that that's, I don't know how that's set up. It's, it wouldn't, it would be scrounging. It is, I mean, really Purrington is the best field for the age group for the, you know, that smaller age group. It's all the minors players. So. Right. All right. Um, so Janine, just. Uh, Joe was uh, saying it was six to eight teams that were going to be using that field this year. Yeah, that, so that I was right then, six to eight teams. That's what I was guessing. All right. Hang on, everybody. Naomi wants to say something. So I'm just going to just mention, um, just so we're fair, if you're going to get price from one in-town business, you probably should look at all of them. 
for that have the ability of sand or whatever you're looking for. You know, you have Townses, you have Mount William, you have Brownies, just to be fair, especially when it's absolutely, um, you know, we have to be, you have to take it and look from the outside in and that's what. Right. We called Brownies so far. I know mm -hmm. that. And I mean, Lisa's the only one that's called from our group and then from WAC. I don't know how many places Joe called. He said that he that he that he called Foster, but he said he called a couple. But it sounded like from a couple that he called, they get it from Foster. So that yeah, I don't know. I don't care where we buy it. I guess. Um, right. I think we need to do our best foot forward. But if we're going to ask one where resident, you might as well ask the other two that are permitted as right. well. Well, yeah, the thing absolutely. about the thing about towns is, I mean, Eldon's got all that equipment to push it around too. I mean, I know. I don't think. You know, Mount William, typically they just deliver, right? They don't do any of the moving the dirt, but Eldon moves the dirt around. So he'd be good. Some and I can go out a little bit on a limb and, and see, you know, we can ask Benji too, but. That's what I was wondering. Does he have equipment at least for spreading and compacting? Well, um, I don't know if the roller is working, but we do have, uh, you know, the graders there, um, the backhoes there. You know, um, we'd have to ask him. I haven't seen him hop on yet. I'm hoping he, uh, he. I'm hoping that he does. All right. If he doesn't, I guess hopefully maybe we can email him or call. Him. Sure. All right. Um, okay. I mean, I guess so. We have to. We don't necessarily have to make final decisions tonight. But I agree with Naomi at least calling. I mean, at this point, we haven't even decided if we're going to try to budget it or or split it or if we're going to leave it all to. Whack. I guess that was my main first question is, do we think we can help support any of this, some of this, all of this? And if we do, then we definitely need to, like Naomi said, price shop more. I mean, if Whack does it, then that's up to them. I'm going to make a quick phone call on, on possibly uh, borrowing a, uh, a piece of equipment from work. I'm going to step aside for a minute. Okay. All right. Thanks, John. Lisa, did you raise your hand? I did. I just, um, I'm very concerned just within our budget um, for what we have this year. Um, so I, I think it would be great if the town, if there's any way that Benji could help with, with um, spreading material and I'll start, I'll go out there with a rake and I'll help. I'll do whatever I can to help. And my kids will help and my husband will help or I'll help. But, um, but we can't, I don't know that we as, as a, as a committee or a commission have, the funds this year. I mean, we're worried about the boat ramp. We're worried about there's repairs that need to be made inside of the sheds that hold the, the water, all of the, all of the inner workings of the irrigation um, stuff. There's plumbing needs in there. There's rotting floors in there um, potentially. So we have other expenses that are coming up and that's what I'm concerned about right I now. I know it's hard. It's early in the season. It's not like we know how much we've spent. We really have, we haven't even opened up the park yet. And that's why I wanted to bring up, you know, the, the, possibility of putting this out to vote to get a repair because it, it the bottom line is whatever we put on there is going to get washed away and it feels irresponsible to me like why don't we need to fix that wall you know right we've had to fix that wall for a while yeah we've had to fix that wall for a while and i just i see money going i see big money being spent to look at the possibility of some other things and it's like well you've got this problem right here that just keeps washing away every every year and i don't understand why you know right but know. can we tell but can we even tell whack that you know we're willing to look into a long-term fix but not a short-term fix but we don't know financially if we even can suggest a long <clears throat> so so i'm not sure that we don't my this is just me this is how i feel right now that we don't have an ability we don't have the ability to fix it short term right now but that we would be happy to i would be happy personally to be looked to look into a long-term fix, but I think that that, I really do think, and I don't, and I don't understand all the ins and outs of it. I understand that John's saying we have to be careful about asking for something because if it gets voted down, but you know, lots of things get voted down, school budgets get voted down and they still figure out how to work their way around it. So I don't, I guess I don't fully understand all of that. Um, but I, I feel like there's gotta be some way or we can get some quotes for a wall so that this doesn't keep happening every year. Who's here? Who's here? 
Uh, Chairman Hipler. Oh, okay. Ricky came. All right. All right. He Can has his hand up. And Asker and Foster's is trying to lay a claim to something that's unique, like oh, titanium. Okay. And right. isn't this, isn't this like um, stuff for manufactured sand? That's what she said. I think Ricky has his hand up right now. Okay, I can't see people, so all right. Can you take that screen? Um, yep, I can stop sharing for a minute. Okay. If I can jump in real quick, um, and then my, com can. my company will uh, will donate a roller if we can get the if we can get Benji to go to my employer and pick up a uh, soil compactor, and I will do the work. Oh, oh okay. Uh, so, okay, all right. But that's an awful lot of moving parts to happen in a very short period of time. Right, right. Ricky, what did you? Hi. Yeah. Hi. So <clears throat> I've just been listening. I've been doing a lot of things in the background, but taking it all in. Um, you might want to look out to Eldon Towns, like Naomi said, because he has a couple of young boys coming up. Um, I think they're just about school age. Um, I'm sure he has a, a plate compactor for the, uh, the small area. Um, the town does own a roller, whether it works or not, I don't know. It's very antique-ish. Um, and to um, Lisa's point, the no means no, uh, John was trying to explain. Um, in the recent past, we have um, tried to go for police cruisers. When it's a specific item, such as a police cruiser or a, um, you know, the, the, the improvement at Bolton Field or whatever it may be, Purington Field, that's a specific use of that money. So the no means no clause says that you cannot do that specific item. When the school budget gets go to, voted down to default, et cetera, there's already line items appropriated for how the town or the, the school is going to work. So because it's a specific item, that's why they say no means no. RSA says you can't do it. So maybe we could phrase it as, you know, just trying to increase our maintenance budget line in general, that type of thing. So we're not giving a specific job if we just increase our maintenance. Or that would be more pliable is, is you know, add $5,000 to the to the park right. recreation maintenance line. That way okay. there, there's no specific, um, you know, use for it. Um, and then, then you guys are, you know, obviously, you know, uh, designees to expend it. So. Right. Okay. That, that, that makes, that makes a lot more sense. All right. Um, no, I think that's a good idea to call, read out, reach out to Eldon. I don't know. Um, I didn't think that he did anything with stone dust or crushing. I don't know. He's got lots of material. Um, so even if not, he may be willing to truck it for you. Um, and, and that might be some of the costs that was associated with, with Henniker um, and spread it, et cetera, and, and put it down. Um, right. There's significant cost right there alone. Right. No, right. Part of any, any part would help. Absolutely. I agree. Cause I don't know how much material he has or what material he has, but I'm sure that Mount William has plenty of material too. So um, Lisa, well, I don't know, Lisa, you'd already called and talked to Brownies. Do you want to try and call another place or two, or do you want somebody else to? I can, I can call um, Townses. I I mean, I honestly call Brownies because um my dad had their number, so it was easy. Right. Um, so I can call Towns, and I can call um, a couple of anybody else that Naomi has. Naomi's got a little list there. Mount William. Um, yeah. Yep. All right. That would be good. Because I just think the same person calls and talks to the same people, then they're not getting four different stories. That well, and honestly, I was, I was planning on calling around anyway. Okay. But I figured I'd start with them so I knew exactly what I was getting a quote for because then I'm not getting a, you know, I wanted it to be the same quote for everything, but he, right. he hasn't come back yet. So. Right. And that's, that's what I was going to say. So make sure you're asking everybody the same thing. Yeah. So what would that material be called that we're looking for? Naomi, you said, you know, dirt a little bit. Is this, <laughs> this what's it, is this like, is this like manufactured sand or stone dust? Is it play? Is it played on, or is it just in front of the dugout? It's this is the field. It's the, the whole field. This is what they're playing on, bases and everything. Okay, so it's got to have some sort of drain material, but it's got to be a clay, uh, have some clay consistency as well. Um, right. I don't know what it's called, but I can find out what it's called for sure. Okay. Because we just need to make sure we're asking for the right stuff. And do you know how many how many yards we need? Um, well, I mean, sounds like we're looking to start off with a Tim Wheeler. 
it they sounded so yeah it sounded like i mean this is this is what one person recommended fosters recommended one triaxle holds 23 tons but when they looked at doing everything with a depth of three inches they looked at like 84 tons that's a real lot of film yeah that's a lot i this is i mean that's the thing we i don't think we physically had someone go out there and look it's hard i don't think he's been there i think that right. I, it sounded like that was a phone call that's why brownies was going to go down and look and that way i could comparison shop right so, once you get actual numbers yeah so i think lisa if you ask each person how much a 10 wheeler load would cost then we're going to have a comparable size well, or even if everybody I need to know what we need first. So Brownies is going to go down and look as soon as they look, they can tell us what they think. And then we can compare with, um, you know, with other places and the if, material type. Yeah. But again, called? this is something that, that they're, you know, I think, honestly, from what I understand, wax moving a little faster on this because they're nervous about getting it done by next week. They may have already ordered something tonight for all we know. Um, I think they they thought that we would be able to just I think they thought that we had the money to just pay for it right away. Right. That we would just wave our magic wand. Yeah. <laughs> we could try. All right. All right. So we definitely I think does everybody feel like we can move on from here? I mean, maybe we can it sounds like with we've got John's offer to help out. We've got a couple more companies to call, see what Wax doing. We've definitely does anybody else have any more questions about this? before we move on to the, the boat ramp. Kind of see how everybody feels. We wanna, I think we all wanna see if we can do something to help, but without a number, we have, we have no idea how much we can help. I Dave, think we're set to move on because at this point we really can't do anything right. until we know what we, how much we need and how much it's going to cost and we get the quotes. Right. There's nothing else we can do. Okay. All right. I, mean, I would go with less is more right now. I mean, if we're just, if it's going to keep washing away and we can get a 110 triaxle dump that's 23 tons and just start asking people, we want 23 tons, how much is it going to cost? Right. Uh, Once we know what it is, exactly. And Once we know even what we, we have to spread it thin enough just to make, as I said, put a band aid on it right. so we can fix it to stop it from draining away. I mean, you're just throwing money away if you're not right. going to fix it. Right. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, so that's, so we're all pretty much on the same page as, and we'll have a lot, we'll have a lot more information in the next couple of days and we can, um, so let's go ahead and move on to the, the boat ramp. Naomi, can I screen share again? Do I have to ask again? Oh, it lets me. All right. No, you should be able to. I'll, once I'm done, I usually block you out, but once okay. you're done, go ahead. All right. So, um, these are, I'm starting walking down the boat ramp. Yeah, these are pictures. I want to show the ones of where you can see the, all right. Um, Jack Meany had mentioned, um, you can see here. So I think a lot of us have seen pictures. Kristen took some, we've all been there and we've talked a lot about it. So you can see the edge of the asphalt here and then there's concrete underneath. Um, like Jack Meany had talked about on Monday night's meeting. I don't know how many people got a chance to, to um, listen to that. So, um, and so Benji had mentioned, you know, getting some fill in here and then cutting away so the asphalt has a nice clean edge and then putting new asphalt on top. And I know some people were kind of concerned about putting asphalt in the water, first of all, kind of oil and what else you're adding into the, into the water. And I know there's a lot of ideas. People had also talked about in the very beginning when we first had the plan drawn up, there was talk about the concrete planks. And I did reach out and call Janest. And um, they make the ones that are 15 inches by 12 feet long, six, four or six inches deep, thick. Um, they were $330 a plank. So needless to say, that's not gonna happen. Um, because I, I mean, literally a thousand dollars wouldn't even get you um, four feet. So four what feet long. What do we need? Well, uh, Benji was saying a 10, 10 foot length of the end. He was going to have it paved 10 feet. So that would be um, like $30,000. No, okay. not 15. I can't add. Um, 
So with the concrete, it's really cost prohibitive at this time without a, a big CIP article because that's just material alone. That's no labor. That's no delivery. That's no pre-setting up the work zone or anything. So it, it would be a, a huge, huge financial project to go with the concrete plant. I mean, unless the town was able to get some amazing contract price for those things, but they're they're expensive. So. Um, so there was another idea that um, that my public comment husband Ryan had mentioned about if we could just possibly okay one of my She's other pictures right pictures. here. Let's see. There's this pile of riprap laying in the parking lot right where they park the boat trailers overlooking the boat ramps down the hill to the left here. So if um, if sand let me show one more picture sorry. Trying to bounce around that's here. That's a sand. Yeah, I'm trying gravel to gravel sticking out. Oh, that's the back. That's way. the one I'm standing on. <laughs> Wrong. All right, this one right here. So you can see when you're standing on the boat ramp, looking down, all this sand, this sandbar right here. It's that's boats don't need to go over a sandbar. So essentially, all this needs to be pulled back, which. Benji, of course, would do anyway. You know, get all said the, that's one of the things yeah. that he wanted to do to start off with is bring that back in. He needs to pull all that back in um, and start filling there with the base. And then if if maybe this riprap could be compacted and pushed on top of that, you know, with equipment and really flattened down in there, because riprap's what they use like on the side of Everett Dam, and it really it holds the it holds all the material in the side and it doesn't. It really doesn't move. It really doesn't wash. I mean, they use it against washout for water and for construction equipment to drive in and out of job sites. It's kind of one of those really scrub the tires. Hold tight, yeah. The hold tight materials, and then you'd of course need to fill in a little bit with some smaller, maybe inch and a half, or three inch, or three inch like to fill in the, the gaps inside. between the riprap. But I'm just kind of my biggest question was: Is this something we can do and not need asphalt? Not need to spend um the thousand dollars you know is that is that an option and that's kind of what i was hoping to see what what benji thought if that would be good enough or if that would just ridiculous or whatever anybody else had ideas so because benji had quoted a thousand dollars for the asphalt itself he didn't know if he'd need any more material underneath to fill in and obviously it would be the dpw's labor we do have to put up, according to the plan that we submitted to DES, we have to put up a silt fence around the area so we're not disturbing additional wetlands. Um, so comments, questions? Doesn't DES frown upon putting asphalt in water? I tried to look. Yes, Naomi, please. I Yes. So I spent some time back and forth with Ryan Duquette, who gave me all the information. I asked that same question because I didn't think with all the petroleum products that they would allow asphalt in there. And he said where it's a replacement, we can use in-kind materials. So I did say to him, I said, you understand that we have um, a paved ramp today. And he just said, you can repair with in-kind. Okay, said, okay, that's right. I didn't remember you said that at the meeting. That's right. Yeah, I forgot so, about and that. And that application got mailed yesterday. So... If no news is good news, by the 10th of, 11th of April, we can get Benji started. And on the application, did we have to specifically state what materials we were using? Nope, just said in kind and I checked it off. Okay, all right, so, okay, all right. Um, and since there's concrete there and asphalt there and dirt and rocks, <laughs> kind of got our bases covered. <laughs> All right. Let me think of that. I yeah, 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 like. <laughs> I didn't look into okay. Um, all right. So, um, other questions? What do people think? If the state is going to let us put asphalt back in the water, then I think we wait until the permit is approved or denied and go from there. And if it's approved, then we can have Benji get started on it. That was the other thing, thank you, that I wanted to uh, bring up to Naomi. Um, they start letting the water back in May 1st. It's completely full by May 15th. So, um, so they take two weeks to fill it up. <laughs> so that's something, I don't know if that changes Benji's 
Well, we can't do anything until the 11th. So the earliest he could start would be the 12th of April. Of April, right. And then actually it would technically be the 13th. And I know he knows about the water. Um, well, that's his, said... And that's his concern. I told him the 12th because I think that was given to us the first time. But his priority would to get right to it because as you can see, every time it rains, it stays there. Yeah, it's staying. It's starting to creep. So up. the idea is, you know, he asked me today when the deadline was and I said, I mailed it on the first, they have 10 days. Mm -hmm. So if I don't hear something by the 12th, obviously the 11th is a Sunday. If we don't hear something <laughs> in the mail, typically, you know, it's a, it's a permit by notification. So unless there's some glaring problem, right. you don't hear from them. Right. So the board of selectmen was, we're hoping that, you know, Monday night we could go and, and give them our blessing to move ahead with Benji's suggestion. But I wanted to put out there the other, the other option that had been tell, thought about. Tell Pam that the idea is we were hoping dollars because right. Benji was calling the asphalt and the water a patch. Right. And that patch, that patch means temporary. That's a thousand dollar patch. That's temporary. Whereas this stone going in there could be the long-term solution, especially if we end up maybe just adding one more small load of stone to it. Right, but Benji did say as temporary could be, he said for all he knows it could last 10 to 20 years. Like he right. doesn't know what the end date of it would be. I mean, there's not, I mean, he was impressed at how good the part that remains was holding up, but that's the part that doesn't see much water, I would imagine, right. so. Well, that why can't we there? use that, that stone that's sitting there around the edges once the once that concrete is it or the asphalt it is take that and put it around all of the edges to keep water from smacking in against the edges and run it down each one of the edges once it's done and you know whether we put a marker into the water or something before it goes in that says okay keep your boat keep your trailer that side of the post because obviously we have the dock on the other side so you can't hit they're not going to hit the dock but if we were to right. put a, a couple of posts into the ground that says okay you've got to stay inside the posts and inside the post and inside the dock which basically lines them up so that they stay 100 percent on the main part of the ramp right well yeah i mean i don't know about you but i, I don't really think opportunity to watch people with boat ramps with boats and trailers but i could only imagine if you had two posts for them to go through it would be be <laughs> bad fast benji said this is 16 feet wide yeah oh yeah he was definitely going either 16 or 18 feet wide so it's a really it's a wide area that he was going to pave it was going to be 10 feet 10 feet high and it was either 16 feet, or 10 feet down and, and yeah. 16 feet wide so it's going to be a wide area but i even think the stone dave can even be used like they have to fill you can't just put asphalt with what's there there has to be fill so that stone can even be used as the fill if we do if we do like the idea to move ahead with the asphalt um is there any way that we can ask the engineers that open the dam if they can delay it a no, it's on, days. I don't know. I don't think so. It's the, it's the state. Well, Benji didn't seem to think that he couldn't get it done quickly. Right. But I'm just saying that we're, we're basing everything on 100% going smooth as, as can be. What if we hit a, a, what if we hit a roadblock, something that stops Benji from working on it? And now if they start raising the lake on the first, we lose the ability to complete the repair. Right. You know, That's I mean, saying. I, I don't anticipate that. I, I don't want to, you know, rain on anyone's parade, but we all, we have to think about if we do start the work and for any reason it can't be done by May 1st, we have to be able to stop them from raising the water. That's really a good question. I have absolutely no idea who would even, I mean, it's DES's website that announces the dates of, you know, of when they start letting the water raise. So we could definitely look into finding they, out. They may have silt vent that's taller than four feet. Does that I'm stop? Really it doesn't sure. stop water though. That just stops. Although the dirt it doesn't all stop the water, but if the silt fence is in the water outside of the area that needs to be worked on, then we should still be able to place, well, they wouldn't be able to place asphalt. I don't think the equipment would work in the, but, but as far as getting that riprap down there, which is what that large stone is called, that can make 
that can make a suitable surface to back boats down onto. Right. If the riprap is used over the sand, they typically use riprap to, to prevent the erosion. And when the boats come up the ramp on the trailer, water's coming off of them. When it rains, water's rushing down there. When the dam is lowered, water is coming in at the surface of the asphalt that we've just lost is gonna work on it. The thing is with the riprap, what I was thinking is the riprap will move with the frost. And since it's little pieces, it's pieces of rock that average in size of six inches, that, that this remains flexible, you know? Riprap also uh, has natural sharp edges, which can slice tires. That's why I'm 100% against using riprap as the only thing the tires will touch. Right, but you, but so they use it to go in and out of job sites all the time for cars and trucks, and they smash it down, you know, with the excavator bucket and such, so it's flat, and then they fill in between. So it's more like a base. It's not the only thing you're driving on. They fill it in with the inch and a half or the three inch. inch. So and every time a boat goes in there and guns it with their props, it's going to disturb that too. Right. The fines are holding everything together. I, I, I feel that's a bad idea. That's just my opinion, though. Right. I was curious too to see what 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 Benji thought if he even thought it would be even something worth trying. Lisa. Thoughts, concerns? I don't love the idea of putting um, putting asphalt in the water, but I mean, if it seems to be our only option that we could do, you know. So, yeah, that's I. I, I like the impressed. idea. I'm sorry. What'd you say, Ryan? I'd be impressed to see. A, I'd be impressed to see a boat motor move six and eight inches rocks, but. I agree. I agree. I like. I like the idea of riprap, but I. I know that it's gonna. I don't know. Oh, I think it's, no, it's gonna have to do more than just that. It's gonna wash out the fines between the six and eight inch rocks. That's where the three inch crush would right. work. That's what it's gonna. Anyway. Anyway. That's that's why the road agents, the expert about that stuff. Dave, thoughts? I would really prefer the pay. I'd really prefer the pavement and putting the the rock around the edge than just putting the rock down it just i'm very worried i just don't need anybody giving us an excuse to come after the town because we didn't build the boat ramp pro we didn't do the boat right. ramp properly. well i think the rock would get used under to fill in they i mean he has to fill before the asphalt can go down so i think the rock would be used under so i don't think we'd have left over rock i mean that's my own thought but all right, so uh, the board of selectmen asked us to, you know, and we're all invited to go Monday to talk and, and let, um, let them know what we think. So I guess at this point, we'd have to just kind of see a consensus. I don't know if we want to actually vote on giving our blessing or, or more comments. I don't think, uh, maybe Naomi knows better, but I don't think this goes to a vote here. I think. I think that the board's listening to any concerns on, and honestly, I'm not, I'm not an engineer. If I thought, if I, I mean, if we could do it without putting pavement in the water, I would love that, but um, I don't know that that's the case. So, um, you know, I'd leave that up to the board of selectmen and, and Benji at this point, if it's allowed, I just didn't want to do anything that wasn't allowed. And again, I don't, I don't really love the idea about putting asphalt in water, but it seems again to be our only choice. All right. All right. Then that sounds like we we've kind of we've got an idea of what we'll uh, talk about it with the board of selectmen and let them know that you know obviously it seems like it's going to be the best solution that we have available to us right now. I mean, we can. Oh, my computer screen's dimming. Does that mean that my battery's getting dying? I don't know how to work that. Okay. Got a. The other thing is, is Naomi obviously. Would we hear, we could possibly hear back before the ten days, correct? Do they have, do they send us back it in writing, or is it just some notification that they say, "Hey, you're good to go"? Typically, what they do, Dave, is they'll uh, they'll tell me that they get the plan, and somebody fumbles through it to make sure it checks there, the plans there, and just so the like the easy things are. We've been through it um, with the snowmobile club. 
and they just really look at the application, make sure the application is completed, signed, there's a plan, there's a check, and then it goes off and somebody else reviews it. If for some reason, which happened to us, somebody forgot to put the check in with it, then they sent you a note back and said, it's incomplete because the check was missing. So once it's complete, um, typically if somebody sees something glaring, they do take a first look real quick, Dave. But, um, you know, I, I think, you know, I combed the plan pretty well. The gentleman that did the plan for us did a nice job and added everything that was on their checklist. I included the check. I signed it. The board gave me authorization. So keep our fingers crossed that it's a one and done. But um, I, I don't know how detailed they get because they're still remote as well. Okay. All right, so it sounds like we will talk to the Board of Selectmen Monday and, and, and let them know how we feel that, you know, that if this seems like it's the best option to move forward with the asphalt, and we can definitely mention the, the riprap and the sand and, and see if, if, if they think it would be enough. But the other without, thing I, we're going to ask you about is, um, and I hate to delay, um, make this longer for a Friday night, but um, Eversource always does an Arbor Day. And oh, yeah, that's it, right. And they do it in a town that they do a lot of trimming in. And this year for 21, Ware is scheduled to have a lot of trimming done. So he reached out to me to see. And what they typically do is ask one to Eversource and some town officials will get together and they will plant two trees um, somewhere on town property, obviously for us to continue to take care of. And um, I guess my thought was maybe, I know we've taken trees down at Chase Park, but if they were a decent tree, maybe they could become a good shade tree somewhere, um, you know, and let them grow. But, you know, we were gonna ask you guys that too. That's right, I remember that was in the email too. Yeah, well, I know Lisa's nodding her head. I always thought Chase Park should have no trees and be all full sun. That's why I go to the lake, <laughs> but Lisa wants all shade. I camp out in the shade. Um, so I totally camp out in the shade and actually the shady spots get taken up um, quite often. But right now we have, you know, people will come in, in the morning and actually grab those spots and wait for their the rest of their family to show up hours later. We should ask the um, staff about the raking though. <laughs> but yes, the problem is we've got pine trees there and that's a lot of raking. Um, We've, you know, staff has had, had, you know, quite, quite the job taking care of that. So I would love to see some uh, leafy trees instead of the pine trees. We don't know what kind of trees though, do we, Second. Naomi? I can, I can find out for you before Monday night, okay. but I'm with Lisa. I like a shade too. Yeah, and, and that's, that's fine. I can't really think of a, a better spot for one of our parks. I mean, unless it was something like out on the outskirts of, Bolton or something, but you're not going to see it. That we need a shade tree at Bolton on the playground for sure. On the play, would they? Oh, they, ooh, now that would be neat. That's kind of a neat idea, right in the middle of the playground. What do you guys think of that? Hey, Janine, Ricky had a question a little bit ago. Uh, oh, okay. I don't know if you saw it or not. I can't see that, so thank you. I did had no idea. Thank you. Yep. Go ahead. My Ricky. only concern with putting it on the playground. Oh, okay. Is if Hang it's on, not Dave. a. Yep. Hang on. We're going to just go back, see what Ricky wanted to talk about, and then I'll go right back to you, Dave. Well, I just, I was on the boat ramp. Um, yeah, I'm, I, as a, as a board member, I'm not in favor of only riprap. I'm in favor of what, what Benji suggested with that temporary to, you know, semi-permanent um, repair that could last 5, 10, 20, who knows how many years. Because, um, I mean, let, let's be honest. I mean, we, you, you go out on the highway and what do you see on the side of the road? You see boat trailers on, on their wheel because the tires are all rotted. They've been sitting forever. Um, they're very, very weak. Um, not like power crews, et cetera, that have brand new tires on their stuff or newer tires. Um, these are all dry rotted, et cetera. So to me, even an inch and a half rip wrap, three inch rip wrap, six inch rip wrap, um, those sharp edges um, would not fare well with a, with a, a aged boat tire um and i just don't want to put the town on that liability of um you know of losing tires and have to pay for tires because they back down in there um and then popped one so um you know i think i think benji's got a pretty good handle on it um you know as far as an idea um being able to repair it with like material um 
you know, and it's the same road crew that, that did the last few years for us, R and D paving that would be doing the, the asphalt. So, um, you know, my, my thing was my takeaway from the last selectman's meeting was just making sure that, that you as the, um, you know, the park committee and, 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 and board were okay with, um, you know, that much money coming out of that maintenance line. That was, you know, that was one of my bigger concerns. Right. That's and that's why I was only thinking, could we save some money? <laughs> but no. right, right, and I'm I'm sure that you're gonna have to go underground. You're gonna have to dig that up, et cetera, um, and put some base down in there because it looks like it's very, very sandy. So I'm sure that that Ben, you may be able to use some of that riprap as a base material underneath. But to to make that finish, I'm I'm not I'm not personally in favor of that. Right, right, but it'll definitely help if you can use that as some of the fill. So that'll be correct. Good. Yeah, awesome material. That's all I had. Thank you. Thanks, Ricky. Um, all right, Dave, back to the playground at, with the trees. It depends on how big that tree is, as I would be concerned that if it was a route, not a, a mature tree, that kids would try to climb on it and it get broken. And that would be my concern of putting it on the playground at Bolton is the tree getting damaged right i mean they'd probably have to put something you know whether they stake it and support it or put like a temporary fence something i yeah i mean i realize that that's that's definitely a concern anywhere it goes it's a concern if the young trees put up with the fence so we'd, we'd have to hope that it could be you know marked off or or staked off well enough and i think that they would be doing that anyway because they realize they're doing public spaces so it'll be interesting to find out i think the kind of tree because I don't think we want a, a pine tree in the middle of the playground either. Well, the other thing is, is on the playground is, is I hate to say it with a leafy tree, while they're beautiful, uh, some at some point all those leaves are going to be on the ground, and who is going to be responsible for cleaning up that me cleaning up the mess? Right. I mean, yeah. Well, I know I realize it's not super tree areas. So there's not a lot of leaves going already, but it's definitely. There's wood chips and everything down already. I can't see the one, one or two trees being a huge concern. I propose maybe a, an alternate spot if you can't agree on anything else. You have one in mind? Um, looking, park. At, looking, at, looking at the satellite view of the gazebo park area, um, there's a couple of corners that, ha that could probably use some trees and it's a lot more public, if you will. Right. Right, that would be, are you shaking your head, Pam? Oh, you're muted still. What what corners are you referring to, John? So looking at the satellite view, the corner uh, closest to 114 and the middle school, there's nothing there. That's where they put all of the snow that they plow from the bus loop. Okay, another potential is if you look at, uh, we're doing two trees, depending on what trees they are. What about um, on both ends of the walkway leading to the gazebo? There's a little gap there. And if that's not a great idea, maybe somewhere in the area where that little parking spot is uh, up off of East Road. Just just a thought. Oh, yeah, over there. Well, they put the porta potties there when they do the. And that's where they set the giant slide up to sometimes. Well, the other thing would be how about over on the tennis courts? On the on the on the on the parking lot side, there's absolutely no shade there that you could put the trees possibly there to help give some shade to the tennis court. Well, we don't want anything between the courts and the parking lot. That's your thing, because that's if we're going to be doing all that reconstructing, we have to get in there. What we Lisa, what was your thought? Um, I think it's kind of a moot point right now. We don't know what kind of trees they are, so I think it's a discussion we could have later. Right. So I guess the answer is yes. Friday we night. just don't know. We just don't know where. <laughs> but I think we're excited about two trees. Sounds like we can come up with a couple ideas. Now everybody like Chase Park is an idea. Absolutely. Um, all right. One other thing, going back to the baseball fields, if yep. uh, if we are going to be needing uh, a soil compactor, I'll need to know um, as soon as possible what because uh, I've got to coordinate with Benji and him coming to pick it up. I'm gonna ask him if he's even able to do that this week, provided the trailer's working and all that stuff. Um, and then obviously they want it for this weekend or this upcoming weekend. So right. I don't know if that's gonna, it's an awful lot of moving parts to happen in, in, a, in a five day period. I'm just concerned that we're not gonna be ready to have that done by next weekend. 
if they had to push their schedule back a week, I really, I mean, I know like for um, Pam and Lisa and I, we have older boys playing baseball. And I know that the director specifically said, I believe for our age group, we're not starting till May. So, I mean, or the end of April for us, I know it's different for each age groups. I think if they had to push back a week, they, they could do that. Lisa? I, I think that they probably said next week because there's a potential for, you know, people start getting out there early. If the fields are dry, the fields are not ready at all. I've been on Purington and I've been on Ineson, um, just walking around and they're just, they're spongy and really nobody should be on them. So um, yeah, I think it was more of a, Oh no, quick. We need to be there next week. Right. Um, right. I just so. want to make sure because it's a lot of moving parts on my end to get, uh, to get this piece of equipment. Right. So a couple more phone calls and we should know in a couple days, it sounds like for this one. Okay. Right. That's true too. Um, okay. So um, if everybody's good with what we've talked about so far, we got a field use. Is everybody good with what we talked about so far? Okay. We got a field use form. I even printed it out. Um, same as last year, the car show to benefit John Stark football boosters field town at the, um, the town gazebo. So it's Paul and he's asking for Sunday, September 26th, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. because they want to do set up and clean up and parking and everything. He just wanted an okay early, even though it's September because they want to start advertising next month. So, um, I mean, they did it last year. I didn't see any damage. I know John had mentioned last year, I think he was slightly concerned on the cars being on the grass and the parking and all that kind of stuff. But I, I think it went really well. And I don't remember having any reports of any damage or anything like that. I would just say it's contingent upon the field being dry and ready to take, take it. Obviously, if we get three, day, three weeks of rain before that, then I... You know, if, if it can't support the weight of a car, then I don't want them. Right. Driving well, that, and I don't think they'd want to be out there if that was if that was the case. But you're right, Dave. Absolutely. Pam, thoughts? I'm I'm fine with them using it. It's a good fundraiser for them. Lisa. Yep, I I agree with what everybody said so far. All right, John. Yeah, um, I agree with Dave's point. As long as we can make sure that that field is is dry as a bone so it doesn't get red up, then I think it's a great place. All right. It's also, okay. it's in September, so the likelihood of us getting three weeks straight of rain is, I mean, not no, I guess out of the realm of possibility, but we're, we would be coming off of the summer, and it probably wouldn't be too much of a wet field. For my, for my well's sake, I hope it rains every freaking week. <laughs> <laughs> we got a new well this year, John, for the same reason. Um, all right. Yeah. Um, okay. Awesome. So I'll, I'll email them and, and let them know how we feel. And lastly, this is mostly actually towards Naomi um, and everybody. Uh, Denise reached out to me um, about uh, to find out about the tennis courts, what the next step is with the Emma Sawyer Fund. She doesn't, uh, basically, when they told her, yes, they said they were going to direct her to you because they thought that you would be a great go-between for what she needed to do legality-wise. I don't know what to tell her next steps-wise or what she should do because she was hoping ASAP for uh, getting yeah, in there so to work. What we, um, you sent me over the scope of work. I have to run an ad at least to do that for due diligence. Okay. And then you did get quotes from two people. She did? Yes, she got quotes from, that was Vermont Recreation, and she also got the quote from Lineberry. I have that as well, I think, or Dave does. Yeah, you sent me over something from Vermont. Right. Yeah, so I've got to put it in next Friday's paper. Okay. And then once they do it, the selectmen can you know, issue the bid and they can get started. And then when we're done, we just write a voucher to the um, trustees and they cut us a check back. Okay, so Denise doesn't really, at this point, it's kind of on to you. Does Denise not need to? No, I think because the selectmen for the policy, we have to put it out to bid because they've given us up to $18,000 to fix it. So it's something mm -hmm. that we have to do and follow our purchasing policy for. Do you want Vermont, uh, do you want Limeberry's estimate as well? Um, why don't you give me their address? Because if it's not recent, most most numbers are only good for 30 days. Oh, oh no, this is definitely, this is, no, this is probably, this is months old. If you can so. give me a contact, I can send them over the specs. 
Okay. And tell them when the bid deadline would be and they can send it in. Okay. And then I and think- I'll do with Vermont. I think she reached out to- And, li and you're gonna send it to Line, and you're gonna send it to Lineberry as well, correct? Yeah, that's what- Lineberry, yeah, Vermont, and anybody else you can think of. There was one we'll other put company- put it in the paper because somebody may be bound to see it that does it that we don't know about. The, um, somebody else, uh, I thought she'd reached out to one other company and they didn't even, either they didn't respond or they said they were just too busy. They weren't even gonna look at it. I'll have to ask her. Um, all right, so I'll ask Denise that. I'll tell her the next steps. That's what she was inquiring about. So awesome, that's really- She also called me and emailed me so I can drop her a yeah. line as well. Okay, oh yeah, he did say, you wanna let him know? Let Denise know? Do you wanna let Denise know or do you want me to let I Denise know? I can do know? that. She left me a message and emailed me. Okay, and do you want to tell, Paul, Paul said he told you about the field use too. Do you want to tell him or do you want me to tell him? Yeah, we can do that too. I think he talked to Karen. Okay, all right. Okay, so that's everything I have on the agenda for our short notice meeting of emergency type of stuff, unless anybody else needs to chime in. I'm all set. Do we make a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> Everybody aye. Said, Lisa said aye. John? Yes. Dave? Aye. Pam? Yeah, aye. Janine? Yes. <laughs> Naomi? No, just <laughs> All right. Thank you, Naomi, for coming out on a Friday. Yes, thank you thank very you. much. Okay. No problem. And thank thanks you, to Ricky. All right. Thank hey, you. Can, you everybody. can you send me a link for the Monday's Board of Selectmen for this I, Oh, for, oh, an invite? Does yes. everybody want one? Yes, yes. please. Okay. Yes, please. I can do that. Yeah.